If you've ever used a Web3 wallet to buy an NFT or do any kind of a DeFi trade, you are at major risk of losing all of your funds. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to decrease that attack surface and make sure that you do everything in your power to prevent getting hacked. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Seth. This is Mind Your Biz. And on this channel, I teach you the security and privacy tips that every cryptocurrency user should know. So let's jump in. When I say Web3 wallets or when I say DeFi and NFTs, most people are using MetaMask. It's the most frequently used Web3 wallet. There are others. I personally prefer a few different kinds of wallets on my desktop. But MetaMask has some vulnerabilities. Not even just MetaMask, but Ethereum and networks like it. Avalanche, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain. They operate in a similar fashion. And because they allow for smart contract access to your wallet, there's the possibility that you could have problems if you leave those smart contracts open. We're going to use revoke.cash to revoke the permissions of those smart contracts so that you can stay more secure moving forward. Ready? This is the revoke.cash main site. Revoke Cash is a useful tool for tracking and revoking token approvals in your EVM wallet, such as MetaMask. The issue with active and unrestricted token allowances is that they can create significant security vulnerabilities when using dApps. To address this, it's essential to understand how to use Revoke Cash effectively to revoke unnecessary approvals. Rest assured, Revoke Cash is a reputable service and its source code is readily available on GitHub for auditing purposes. First things first, I'm going to connect my wallet. You see that there are some options between Brave Wallet, Wallet Connect, Ledger, and Coinbase. Brave Wallet is kind of standing in for MetaMask. If you're using MetaMask, this is the option that you would select. I'm using Frame Wallet. You can look up Frame Wallet or see my tutorial here on Mind Your Biz at frame.sh or check our playlist. I'm going to approve access. And before you know it, you see the wallet address of the wallet that I just connected. This wallet has been very carefully maintained, but I've only looked at the Ethereum network. I need to click this drop down to look at other networks such as Binance Smart Chain or Polygon. It looks like there are several other airdrops and token transfers that have been made to this wallet, but there are no allowances because these were airdrops. Also, for whatever reason, on the Binance Smart Chain, I have unlimited spending ability on the Matic token. It's possible that I've had some dealings in both Matic and apparently wrapped Ethereum. And the way that I'm going to get rid of those token allowances is to switch my wallet to that chain. On the Binance Smart Chain, it's updating to allow me to make that change. I'll move down to the tokens where I want to make those changes and give it zero. Now in the case of this wallet, I am using a hardware signing device to sign the transaction. That's why it's taking so long before any movement is visible on screen. Okay, I've signed the transaction with my Ledger wallet. There's no longer an allowance there. Instead of editing here, I can click cancel and simply click on revoke. I'll still have to sign with my hardware signing device or from within MetaMask. And as of the time of recording on the Binance Smart Chain, the fee for doing this transaction is about two cents in US dollar value. It wasn't entirely free, but I will have more peace of mind knowing that there is no more connection to any smart contract. All right, let's look through Polygon as well. May have some additional, nope, no allowances there, though I didn't know that I had a balance of Aave, so I guess it's good to see that. Arbitrum, unlikely that I have any allowances. Oh, same with Arbitrum Nova, same with Optimism, same with ZK Sync Era, and with Avalanche. I rarely use these networks, if at all, and not ever with this wallet. So there you have it. Very simple to use with a couple of drop downs and the typical wallets that you already use for your NFT purchases and for your DeFi. I cannot stress enough another layer of security is to use a hardware wallet. During my walkthrough, I was using the Ledger Nano S Plus. It's not the only wallet that I would endorse using, but it is the top of the list because of its support of both Ethereum, similar chains to Ethereum, like Binance Smart Chain and Polygon, as well as all of the chains within the Cosmos ecosystem, IBC chains. It's one of the only wallets that has hardware support on the Kepler wallet. 
in your browser. That's why I keep going back to using the Ledger wallet. So can't recommend strongly enough that you have one. And my preferred wallet is Ledger. Thanks so much for watching all the way through this tutorial. I hope that you learned something. Be sure that you share this with somebody that needs to learn how to protect their Web3 wallet and prevent a potential future hack. All right. Thanks for watching to the end. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face. Remember to stay private and mind your biz.